Hi everyone, this is Lisa Cronin from It's Little Things in Card Making, and I'm back to show you some of the things that I've been playing with. This video has taken me a week and a half to do. I just kept playing and playing, and when I finally decided it was time, I didn't have enough memory. I was up until 5 o'clock in the morning. I had everything all set. I had everything cut. And I said, today I'm winging it. So I'm winging it. I'm a little out of practice for, you know, video making. So bear with me. But I had an idea which I thought would be so helpful to use up some of the backgrounds or enhance the backgrounds that we have sitting in the drawer waiting to do something with or creating, you know, the backgrounds for a focal point that's been waiting um, to be used. So, I'm going to be using my Go Press and Foil machine, and a little bit into the video, I'm going to also um, use my foil quill pen. And I want to show you what I've been working on. I've been working on foiling backgrounds, and there are, there are so many different ways to do this. I am going to try to be as organized as possible. First, I'm going to show you a die, and it's this die. And this die is from Spellbinders. Very cool die. And what I did with this was I foiled it, the die itself. I foiled it onto black cardstock. And then what I did was I took, I had cut out a stencil. I put it on top, the foil was on the paper, and then I just, with my foil quill, I just started transferring the foil. Very cool. So this is one that I did with the quill. But you don't need the quill. You don't have to have the quill. That will just enhance the background that, that you have, but you don't need it. I'm going to show you how I do my foiling. But I'm first going to show you some examples. Okay. Do you remember that, that die that I had? It was um, this die here. Well, I foiled that onto cardstock. And this is the look that I got. Still working on this card. This I also did the same way. I foiled the background. And then with the foil quills, I filled it in. There's a little trick to this, too. This is the same thing, but without being filled in. You don't have to have the foil quill to fill it in. You can fill it in with um, die cuts, so you can die cut this and put whatever colors you want. You can do whatever you want, but at least you have a base. This is also a card in progress. And this was with gold foiling. And then with the quills, I foiled just the center pieces of each. So that's one. Um, okay. This, I, I, I love this. Because this is something that you can do. It's very, very easy. And it's not a lot. It's not like, you know, this one here first one I showed you, the Spellbinders. Spellbinders one is a copy, I'm sorry, not a copy, but a design that's going to stand pretty much alone with a sentiment, and you're done. This is going to be your base, and you're going to build on this. You can put whatever you want on top of it. It's going to give you the background noise that you need, and it's going to be pretty. Now, you can tell that one is a little more noticeable than the other. And that's because I've been playing with cardstock and different types of paper and trying to see what gives the best result. So you'll see some that have, you know, a little more obvious foiling and some that, you know, have a little less foiling. It's not that I'm not getting coverage. It's just that I'm not getting, let's see if you could see the difference. I'm not getting the same amount of foiling in each um, in each stitch mark. Getting more here, and possibly because this paper is a little thinner, this is a little thicker, so the die goes into it more. So that's 
that's one. Um, I have so many here. Okay. This is another one. And this I also did with the foil quill pen. So this was a Spellbinder's Die, I think. And this would be a background for anything. Balloons, happy birthday, congratulations. I'm, it's, it's, it's a great background. It's a great starter. Um, and then you would just add something that would complement, you know, the background. So that's this this one, and I brought everything to my desk, but my desk is a disaster. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, as I'm talking, I'm going to start foiling one of the cover dies that I have. And the way that I do that is I take a piece of typing paper or copy paper, and I line it up as much in the center as possible. This is how I know where to put my die, where to put my paper. So this is a guide for me. And I do this pretty much all the time. Now I'm gonna take this die. Well, we're not using that die. We're using this die. And it's it's ferns, and I'm trying to remember who this who this belongs to, and I can't remember, and I'm not gonna look. So the die goes down first. Then you have your foil, and that goes face down onto the die. And again, I'm using, you know, my, my copy paper to let me know that I'm not askew, that I'm, I'm even. And then I just moved it. I'm going to plug it in. It's all ready to go. I'm going to take this green paper, and then I'm going to take this bright green And I know where to put it, because I know where my die is. I'm using that copy paper as kind of a, uh, see here I go again, as, as a direction as to where to put my paper. That's not the right word, but you know what I'm talking about. Then what I do is I shim it. And I'm going to shim this with, and I do this with all of my, Go press some foils. Whatever size the card, the paper is that I'm foiling, that's the size of my shim. That's where I want the pressure. I don't want the pressure all over because that's taking pressure off of the die. So I put two shims in. They're exactly the same size as the paper that I'm foiling. And now I'm going to close it up. Okay. So while that's heating up, I want to show you some more cards that I did. Okay. This is another card that I did, and this is the Spellbinder's Die. And look at the background on this. Now, had I not had that background, it would have looked empty. It would have looked like it was missing something. It was all alone, and it just wouldn't have that same sense of interest. So this I did when I foiled it. I foiled it, I left the foil onto my, on my paper, and then I used my foil quill to fill it in. Then there's this one. This one is the foil quill I did on, on this paper. So I had, okay, so I foiled this this part here, and I'm looking for the die because that would explain it better. And it gave me all my gold. And then what I did was I overlaid the black just so that white and gold, that iridescent gold, can shine through. So that black is actually overlaid. It's not inlaid. It's put onto. Um, this came out so pretty. And this again the foiling, when you put it through and you do your background, that's your guide. That's the word I was looking for. That's your guide. That's telling you what kind of a design you have to work with. And then I'll explain how I foiled them. But I want you to see some of them that I didn't foil in. That you don't have to use the 
uh, We on Memory Keepers foil quill. So look at this. Now you can see that I foiled a whole bunch of dies in the background. Made a focal point, a sentiment, did some layering, and that's a beautiful card. I actually like the green one better. So this one, I love this. I love the colors. I did some ink blending with some distress inks. And this looks so pretty. You don't have to do a whole cover. You know, I mean, you could see the flowers in there. I've got to turn my other light on. Let me bring it over. Okay. You can see the foil in there. And it's so subtle. But it's enough to fill up the card. One focal image, a couple of sentiments, do some layering, and you're done. Use up your backgrounds. I know I have two drawers full of backgrounds just waiting. You don't have to just do cover pl plates. You can do just regular dies. So this I did with, I thought I had everything together, but I, I guess I didn't. I did this with a Simon Says die, and I used it as a guide to where I wanted to put my little hearts, and you know, so it kind of helped me with the design of this card. Very pretty. I didn't finish it. Sending love is going to go up here, and hoping my husband gets the door. So that's another way to use it. This is ready to go through my machine, and I'm going to put it through very, very slowly, and I'm also going to feel, I'm going to feel the resistance. If I feel like I'm not getting enough resistance, and after a while, you'll know what that feels like, then I'm going to shim it again, but I'm not going to open it up. I'm just going to set it right on top, and I want to use the same size. I'm going to put it right on top of the plate and run it back. It's so important to try to keep everything um, right on top of the page that you want to foil onto because if you don't, you're, you're distributing the pressure too much and you're not going to get a good, you're not going to get a good foil. So, let's see how we did. So you can see, and now you can see the background. And that was just one pass in the machine. It came out perfect. Now we can do something with this, but I'm going to keep going because I want, there's so much more that I want to, I want to show you. So I'm going to lay that back down. I'm going to put this die on the side. I want to do this die now. And all I want to do is just make a little noise on this background. So I'm going to lay this face down. Lay my cardstock down. And I'm going, I'm going to do this, the same thing. I'm going to put two shims, the same size as the paper I want foiled. Because that's the only place I want pressure. I'm going to close it up. And I'm going to let it heat up. And it's not going to he take as long to heat up. But, but look. I mean, what can we do with this? There's so much we can do with this. I, I love this. I mean, this is just 65 pounds. Nina um, in the fluorescent color. Very pretty. I'll probably come back and show you what I've done with them. So as I said, you don't need to do a whole cover. You can just do pieces. And that's what I did here. And it was just easier for me to, you know, put these die cut pieces into the foiling. And I don't know if I can... So I didn't put it in every one underneath 
Um, this card went through a lot of changes. So, yeah, I guess I did put it in every one. But this, I'm going to send to a man. I, I mean, my brother-in-law's birthday. I can send him a butterfly, right? The color's good. And the intent is um, very genuine. Okay, we're ready. We turned green. Let's see how this comes out. And with different paper, you're going to get different results. I'm going a little too fast. I'm getting good resistance, but I think I'm going to add another shim for the way back. You don't know if you're going to need that shim until you put it through the first time. Because that's, you know, every die is different. All your papers are different thicknesses. So it's the feel of your whatever machine, whatever die cutting machine you're using. And you'll begin to, to feel, I'm going to put that in. You'll begin to feel the, the right amount of pressure. Okay. So let's see. Oh, very cool. We can do a lot with this. Can't we do a lot with this? I love this. Oh my gosh, a bumblebee. How about a bumblebee that's like, you know, like a rainbow? Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so that was that one. I'm going to take this off, put it to the side. Now I'm going to take another one. And that one, where's all my stuff? This one I've never um, done before, so I don't know how it's going to come out. This, I should tell you where these dies are from, but do I even want to stop to do that? Okay. This is um, Tim Holtz's um, oh, coated, coated paper. Um, it's not the right name, but that's kind of um, what I'm thinking. Oh, gosh. Here we go. Like 5 o'clock in the morning again. Okay. So there's this, and I have the rainbow foil, and I'm going to cover it. And typically I wouldn't leave it that big, but I didn't cut it down. I'm going to be putting the shiny side down. I'm going to feel where that die is. And Okay. Again, I'm going to put two shims in. And I don't know if I need a third, remember. I won't know that until I put it through the machine the first time. And if I need a shim, I'm not going to open it up. I'm just going to put it on top of the plate. And we're at 18 minutes, and I still have so much to show you. I'm going to close it up and wait for the green light to go on. But look at this. I love this. I absolutely love this. That foiled very, very well. Again, it's the paper. This is, um, I think it's Bristol Smooth cardstock, so it's a little thicker. Okay, this one's ready. Let's see how we do with this one. Going slow. I'm starting to feel the resistance. Feel a little bit. I am definitely putting in another shim. This feels even looser than the other one. And I have so many backgrounds that I can now foil and start working with and it will give me a starting point and it will give me some ideas on how to utilize um, those backgrounds that have just been waiting. Even if I have like a focal image, you know, I can make a simple foiled background on some plain paper and, you know, that will give me something to work with. Okay, I'm going to put these on the side. Oops. So you can see where I foiled. Very nice. Okay. Let's see. Ooh. It's somehow on coated paper. It does foil better. I got to tell you. Foils better on coated paper. Look at that. 
Love the colors in there. Okay. Very pretty. Very, very pretty. I'm going to take this off. Now I'm going to do something else. I don't know if you remember or if you still have these letterpress embossing plates, plates from Spellbinders. Um, <laughs> they do a great job. So this one did this. It came out perfect. So while we're talking, let me get one of them out. We'll get this one out. Let it start heating up. Now, as you can see, it's bigger. So I'm going to take the small one out. Hopefully I can find the big ones. Here we go. Put that down. Put my plate down. Now, I want this to heat up because it's starting out kind of cold. I don't want anything touching these white edges because that's going to impede the pressure. I think the color I want to use is, hmm, what do I want to use? I wanted to do it on foil. I wanted you to see how it, how it looks on foil. So, let's see. Silver. I think I wanted to use silver. Now, I don't necessarily, you know, it doesn't bother me that this plate is bigger than my paper. All I'm concerned about is putting it on straight so there is a design. Okay. I'm going to say that's good right there. Now, again, I want to take some smaller pieces Put on top of what I want to foil. I may have to cut a couple. I should have some here. But of course I can't see it. Okay. I am going to cut this. Remember, it doesn't matter what size your plate is. What matters is what size you're foiling onto. And I'm going to leave that just exactly where it is. Now, it says it's ready, but it's not. There's a thermostat in here, and it takes a couple of seconds for it to realize, hey, wait a second. It, you know, it, it really isn't hot enough to do the transferring. So you see it turned red. So the thermostat kicked in and said, no, 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 you got to wait, you got to wait. So typically anytime you, you close this cover, you know that thermostat is starting to work. And now it's good. And there's quite a bit of resistance here. So, I'm not going to put any more shims in. Going nice and slow. And now I'm working my way back. So, these really, I thought they were called, these plates... I thought they were called um, impression, like impression plates. Taking that off. Okay, so you see it did foil nicely. Mm, not the best coverage. Not the best. I really should have used another shim. See, I'm missing some up here. Now, what I can do is I can try to do it again. I'm not even going to do that. That's going to take me too long. Um, 
but you can tell you you really from these plates you really get good coverage so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another piece of foil I'm gonna put it down probably that's good and I'm going to take the cardstock and lay it down and now I'm going to get the shims that I had and they are what do I do with them okay I'm going fast here because I don't want this to shut off like it did last night okay I'm gonna put two shims in and then a third And let's see, maybe it was, you know, it could have been the paper. It could have been the foil paper that just doesn't, um, doesn't let it adhere well. So now, I'm not liking the way that is. Remember, I want to try to keep everything exactly the same size as what I'm foiling. Well, I'm saying exactly, but the truth of the matter is, it really can't be exact. Okay. And I'm not recording anymore. Am I? Oh, I hope I am. I don't see the... Oh, yes, yes, I am. Oh, I got so nervous. I said, no, I can't go through this again. Oh, anyway, with my spiel in the beginning, I didn't um, say thank you for for um, watching my video. If you like it, please press like, subscribe if you want to see more, share. Please comment. Let me know what you think of this. Okay. And I'm going to go through again, nice and slow. And there is so many, I mean, depending on... Depending on what you have in your stash, there's so many different ways you could um, do this technique. And it's so simple, and it adds such interest to a background um, that might be a little bland or a little, you know, kind of stock looking. You just need a little background noise. Or in this case, if this works, a lot of background noise. Okay. Let's look. Okay, I see down here, maybe it was the foil on that. No, nope, still not good. Still not good. Okay, I guess I have to go a little, a little heavier. Or it could be the paper, it's rather thin. But I mean, it. it you like that grungy look maybe this is something that you will use I don't know again it's playing it's seeing exactly what you what kind of results what you can come up with what's you know um, what the possibilities are so I am gonna do another video right after this because I want to start working on the foil quill pens filling in some areas um, come back, come back, like, subscribe, come back, and I will, um, chat with you in a little bit. Thank you again. If you don't have the time, thank you for stopping by. Stay well. And remember, it's the little things in card making. Thank you. Bye.